And as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. How many of you feel the same way? Amen. Jesus is all that we need. God is good. Good morning. This is Reverend Essie coming at you, coming at you with micro manna. Just a little bit of word today. And I hope that I'm finding you in good health, uh, wealth, happiness, joy in your household and your family, and love, peace. And may you enjoy all that God wants you to enjoy. And if something comes along and tries to stop you from enjoying it, just rebuke it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You rebuke it with the power that is in you. God is good. Um, I'm going to open this up with prayer. Heavenly Father, Father God, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for being our Father. I thank you for giving us the time to be able to talk to you and listen to what you have to say to us as well. Father, use me today with this word. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Speak to the hearts and the minds of those that are listening. and Bless them. Bless their households. Bless them to be able to do those things that you intended for them to do in the first place before the enemy tried to come along and just make everything just ugly for us, Father God. Make it beautiful. Your word says that you make the crooked places straight, and this is what I'm asking today. Whatever's going on in, in, in their lives, make the crooked places straight. Heal their families, heal their households. Heal our minds, Father God. There's so much going on in the world today that concentration and focus is kind of hard to find. So today I'm asking, Father God, that you give us more temptation, as you said in your word, concentration and focus on the heavenly kingdom. Focus more on your positivity and your good than what we focus on with negativity and all the bad things that's going on throughout the world. Father, we turn on the TV, we turn on the radio, and all we hear is bad news. We don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on all of the good things that you want us. Focus on your word. Lord, cause more people to open up the Bible and start reading your word and asking questions if they have questions. You said in your word that we should uh, meditate on these things, and you said let's reason, let us reason together. I notice more people are falling apart and not contacting one another or discussing your word together, Father God. There's more than just the, the brick and mortar. The church is that we should discuss you, and we should discuss you in all aspects of our lives. So, Father God, bring us together. Bring us together and give us and cause us to see, not give us the power, but cause us to see. You already gave us the power. Cause people to see that you are in them, and they can do anything. All things are possible. With God, all things are possible. They can do anything as long as they look towards the God in them, the Holy Spirit that sets in them. Thank you for today, Father God. And bless all, the, all those who came and listened. Bless their hearts. Bless their souls, Father God. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And I thank you personally uh, for coming and listening. And some of you have been asking about the show, and I appreciate it. Uh, I come on every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, prepared or unprepared. Bible says, preaching, <laughs> preaching in season or out of season, amen. So, you know, as long as we allow the Holy Spirit to use us, you don't have to worry about being prepared, amen, because he'll do what needs to be done. All right, amen. God is good. So today I would like to take out a little of your time, a half an hour of your time, to speak about the centurion faith. Okay, do you have what I call the centurion faith? And we know about the story in the Bible where the centurion came to Jesus and he asked Jesus to heal his servant. And I'm getting it from Matthew chapter 8. If you want to turn to Matthew chapter 8, and I will start with, I'll both start with verse 1. It's talking about uh, Jesus healing the leper at first and says when he come down, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, it says, his leprosy was cleansed. Now here we have the case of Jesus healing the leper. And after he healed the leper, the leper said, notice the leper said, if thou wilt. In other words, 
what people have to realize is they say God can do this and God can't do this. Well, put it this way, God can do anything he wants to do. There's just some things that he may choose not to do because the timing is wrong or he just, there's only he knows. And there's things that he will do. And it says, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He even told him, he said, you can make me clean if you want to, if you don't mind. Isn't that how we say today? If you, Lord, if you don't mind, please do this for me. Please help us in this situation. And what he says is, he says, I will. Be thou clean. So Jesus saw the faith even in a leper, and he healed him because of his faith. And then after he healed him, he told him to keep the law. He said, report to the priest, and if you want, and he says, uh, give a gift according to – when they reported to the, uh, to the uh, priest, they gave a gift according to their ability. And if you want to read about the gift, what they gave, you can see it in Leviticus chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. And uh, notice Jesus didn't have a book, okay, that listed the amounts that he should – that the leper should pay – to be healed, okay, you know, like some churches and, and organizations do nowadays. But there are people who actually have books. I was shocked when I heard this. And they have the lists of sins in these books. And across from every sin, they have the price that the person should pay for the priest or the preacher to pray for their healing. Um, that's not, we, I think we all know that's not right. Amen. That's not how God wants it to be. Amen. And they have the cost of sins or miracles that they need. Um, all you need is Jesus. Like the song said, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. As long as you have Jesus, you really don't even need them. Amen. And he also told the leper not to tell anybody. Notice he says uh, in verse, uh, verse 4, he said, See, thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded. See, we were talking about the gift earlier for a testimony unto them. As I said, the gift is in Leviticus 14, 1 to 4 for you scholars that like to study, hoping that you do. Don't ever go by what a person says. I don't care how high of a preacher it is and how well they talk. Always study behind someone and see what the Lord really says about it in his word. Hoping that you have your own Bible. Amen. So notice he says... See thou tell no man. Did you ever notice that sometimes there are occasions in your life when God blesses you and you can't even tell people? Did you ever have God bless you so well and do something for you in your life that is so good? You couldn't tell a person if you wanted to. Amen. There's some things God does for us we cannot share. God can bless you in a way where other people would not appreciate it. Or, or you know, there's always those people with that corrective spirit. They always want to correct and say, well, that wasn't God because God wouldn't do anything like that. Well, they don't, doesn't our word say with God all things are possible? Amen. But aren't we talking about faith here today? You have faith that God's going to do a thing and God's going to do it. Look, either you believe he's going to do it or you don't. If you don't believe he's going to do it, he's not going to do it. God operates wonderfully and mightily off of our faith, as you can see with the leper. And we're going to talk about now the centurion. And then it says, and when, verse 5, uh, And when Jesus was entered in Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Do you hear his faith? This is the kind of faith we should have, the faith of the centurion. The centurion said, I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house. In other words, he's telling him, I am not holy enough for you to come to my house and do this favor for me, this blessing. And he said, all you have to do, Lord, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. That, is, that takes some kind of faith, doesn't it? Lord, just speak the word. First of all, the centurion had to love his servant. There was a lot of love there, respect from, uh, between one another. It was a good servant. This is what we all want to be, right? Good servants. When you're good and when you do what you're supposed to do and you're good to people and you, you worship the Lord 
people are going to take up for you. Be a good servant. No matter what, whatever you do, the Bible says, whatever you do, do as unto the Lord. This was a good servant. And he trusted Jesus. The, the centurion trusted Jesus. We have to have faith in Jesus. He casted his family cares upon Jesus. Do we do that? Or do we? Do you cast your family cares upon the Lord? As it says, there's even a song that we used to sing in Sunday school. I used to teach Sunday school. It says, cast all your cares on Jesus. He cares for you. It doesn't say take it up on yourself and you'll get it done. No. We have to cast all of our cares on Jesus. Tell him everything. He can handle everything. He doesn't need our help. Amen? Or do you do that? Do you, do you cast your cares upon Jesus or do you try to handle them yourself? Amen? And then he goes on to, he goes on to tell about himself. He says, for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me. And I'll say to this man, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my servant, do this and do that, and he does it. And when Jesus heard, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to him, he said, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. As thou hast believed, what do you believe is being done in your life? Are you speaking? Are you creating with your words? Are you, what, do you know whatever the words that you speak You're a creator just like your father in heaven. And the words that you speak create situations in your life. What are you creating in your life? Wreaking havoc? Or are you having waking up the blessings every day? It's something to think about. And if you think about it, the centurion was uh, a Martin Luther, so to speak, um, he's actually going against the Roman church to seek Jesus. Back in those days, people wanted to kill Jesus. This centurion has, he had many people under him. Centurion century, that's where we get the word century. They have hundreds, a hundred or more people under them. This centurion um, was a Roman officer with over a hundred men, and he had high rank pool. In Rome. This man had pull in Rome, okay? He's going against all that he was born to do, all that he was called to do, to go to a Jesus that people wanted to kill, and people disagreed with Jesus to ask him, of all people, to heal his servant. He was a professional, a, a professional officer, Imagine what our nations would be like if our professional officers call on Jesus, would just call on him and say, Lord, we have problems in our country. We need you to help us. We have faith that you are going to correct this that's happening. Amen. The gun, the rape, the murder, the slaughter, the liars, high-ranking officials. And in fact, we, he may have had more than that because in those days, Julius Caesar, um, the Caesars made a century of double strength. So this centurion could have had 200 to 1,000 men under him. Jesus saw that he was a good servant. He saw that he was a good servant and professional officer looking to him. The higher you go in rank, you should, the more you should look upon Jesus because you have souls under you that you are in authority over. And whatever you do, 
as a professional officer, pastor, teacher, preacher, president, whatever you are. You are the leader of these people. You are responsible for their souls. The Bible says sometimes it says a person's blood can be on your hands. It's just like a bus driver, a taxi driver, a mother and a father. When you're riding people in your vehicle, you have those people's blood on your hands. Whatever happens to them is your responsibility. So this centurion, do you have centurion faith? Are you responsible? Are you um, accountable? Amen. The centurion was a good fellow, and he knew Jewish leaders and even helped build their synagogue. If you go back to Luke chapter 7, verses 2 to 5, it says that he even helped build their synagogue. So obviously he was seeing the righteousness in these people, and he was going from his own belief that he was born and raised on and following them, watching them. You know, there could be people watching you. You may not think that anybody cares. You may not think that you may think that you're alone and, and nobody, you have no, no support, and you think that nobody's around, but people are watching you. There are people that are thinking about going against the ways in their life and the influences in their life that's getting them absolutely nowhere, and they may be thinking about coming along with you. Don't ever give up. You would be shocked. You'd be surprised if God would show you who all's got their eyes on you, and they're adoring what you do. They adore you singing. They adore you preaching. They adore you as a teacher, a preacher. You may hear, if you're a preacher, you, may, you know, as preachers, we hear bad things about ourselves every single day. We have the enemy coming up against us in ways unimaginable. But hang in there. God's got a gift for you. He has a blessing for you. Amen? Amen. The centurion's faith in Jesus got the servant healed. He, he told Jesus, he said, speak only. You know why I said that? He told Jesus, speak only. He told Jesus he didn't have to come to his house because he knew that unlike a lot of us today, a lot of people today, he knew that the word heals. Amen? And, you know, the Bible says in the end times people will wax cold, love will wax cold, and, and people's faith will lower. Okay, and I see that happening now. Um People, it seems like a lot of people, you may know some yourself, or they're turning against the word, so to speak. They don't even believe that the word heals anymore. There are some people that are ripping pages. I saw an example uh, one time of a college, a, a, a Bible institute, a Bible college, where the professor ripped pages out of, the, out of the Bible and told his students, you won't even need those pages. This is what people are doing today. The centurion knew that the word heals. Now, you got a man. Here, here we have a man of high rank, a high official, a high professional official that knows the word heals. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with our people? What's wrong with our family and our friends? What is wrong with people? That they can, look, you have people living off of the government. You have some people have nothing. You have some people that are out there, as they say, uh, what is it called? We're... Um, I can't think of gr on their grind, trying to buy food, trying to make it in life, and they still say, that, oh, I don't believe in that Bible stuff. As I got older, I began to see things. What are they saying? Who are they listening to? You're living under a bridge with a bottle of liquor in your hand, and you're filthy and you're dirty, and you still want to say there's no God. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with the people that do that? So many are going against the written word anymore that, you know, they wonder why we don't have many healings today. Why aren't there healings in church anymore like there used to be? There's something wrong with the preacher. <laughs> you know what they say? There's something wrong with the preacher. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not. I believe most of the time it's not. We're supposed to put our faith together as one. And, and if, if the Bible says it so many times in the word from the beginning to end, it says on one accord. We're supposed to be on one accord. You can have a fantastic preacher all you want to, but if you're not on, on accord, one accord with that preacher, nothing. there's going to be an imbalance in your church. 
Nobody's going to get healed. Okay? Corporate faith. Amen? People say today about the word, is it real? Who wrote the word? It's prejudice. The Bible's prejudice. Or how about this one? It's been changed. Tell you something. From my personal experiences, and I've had people that I've loved truly come up against the Bible and tell me things about the Bible, and, and they knew they weren't swaying me. You're not going to sway me. Now, there's some things that you know we all have questions about, but I leave it up to the Lord. If I have a question about something, I leave it. I leave it up to the Lord. We, it, God did not show us everything. The Bible even says there's so many things more that happened than what's in this book. It's like, you can't count it. Innumerable. So if I have a question, I ask Him. Amen. And there's people that say that you know it's been changed. You know, I've had people. I don't believe in that that Bible stuff, that God stuff. You know, the Word is real. Okay, God is real, he is real, and he has shown himself in my life. When I talk, I'm not just talking through the crack of my teeth. I'm talking from personal, close experience with God, the creator of all things. I'm not talking about the universe, and I'm not friends with the universe. I'm not, cre- <laughs> I'm not worshiping the universe. I-, I highly state that. As much as I can, because I'm hearing so many people say it nowadays. They're they're letting go of God and worshiping. They're worshiping the universe. They're, you're supposed to worship the Creator, not the Creator. Amen. God is real. My faith in God is real. And if you pray for something, you ask God to help you in a certain situation, and you wake up the next morning, and that situation is still there. Keep praying. You know what happens is people, you know, they they bow out too quickly. Okay, they get ghosts, as they say. They ask God to heal them of something, and they wake up the next morning and it's not healed. Okay, well, strengthen your faith. What happens to doing your own homework? Strengthen your faith and try it again. If you're not ready to, they try it again Wednesday. Keep. There's no certain set time of time for us to ask the Lord to help us in situations. You're praying for your kids. Your kids just seem like they're not straightening up. Continue to pray for them. You don't say, well, I, I tried. I'm tired of praying for them anymore. I'm done. You know, back in the day, there was a time where it says, you know, uh, 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 lend them over, give them over to the devil. That is just a person who's just out of their mind, crazy, and nobody can help them. Okay? But love your family. Love your children. Love your life. Love you. Amen? Love you. Know that God is in you. Know that you have his power within you, and by no means uh, anything can come along and hurt you. The only way something can come along and hurt you is if you allow it to. You let down your guard. Amen. How's your faith? Strengthen your faith. Do I call it exercising. Do faith exercises every single day of your life. You know, people will will drop a penny in water and 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 say write write a prayer. And, and stick the prayer down in there, and, and they'll bury a penny in their backyard, and they'll do all that hoodoo, voodoo, mumbo stuff, okay? <clears throat> but they, and and they, they, they sit back and wait. And they'll do something, and they'll play the lottery, and they sit back and they keep playing. How many people do you know play the lottery over and over and over and over, waiting for their little incantation and ritual to work? How many people do we know play the lottery for years? 10, 15, 20 years, still haven't hit, but they're still successful. Well, not successfully. They're still ritually continuing on that incantation that's not working for them. So why not give God a try? <laughs> Amen, right? Why not give God a, give him a try? <clears throat> Tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. Pray about it every night. There's people that have uh, uh, arthritis. Okay, people have um, diseases, certain diseases, cancer, all kinds of sicknesses and diseases, but they're continuing. The ones that have faith are continuing to work against it. Are you going to, it's just like taking, uh, you remember tug of war where people held on to uh, a string, uh, whatever, a rope, pulling against the other team, okay, and you're pulling and pulling to see who's the strongest, and the strongest team fell down and won. This is you. It's a tug of war. The stronger you get in your faith, the, the, the strong ones 
we're, uh, the stronger you get in your faith, we'll say it that way, the stronger you get in your faith, the more you're going to win that tug of war. No matter, stop going by what your eyes see and going by what the word says. Amen? Somebody said, uh, I, I have never seen God. I can't see God. Well, I say you can't see thoughts either, but they're there. You can't see the air either, but it's there. Strengthen your faith. Amen? Can't believe because they don't want to. They give up. They refuse to activate the creator within and continue to be flesh-driven slaves. And I refuse I plainly state today, and I hope you're saying the same thing, let's refuse to be flesh-driven slaves. Amen. Are you saved? Are you saved? Have you accepted Jesus into your life? Like the Roman centurion did. Where's your faith? You believe in it? Do you believe in the power of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach? Do you believe? If you believe and you want to be saved, just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for accepting me. Amen. And if you've done that, Look for Bible-believing, tongue-talking church and learn of him. It's never too late to learn his ways. I hope you got something out of this today. Have centurion faith. Just believe. Believe in him. Believe in him as he believes in you. God bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless your family. And may you want for nothing. Just remember, God lives in you. God bless and have a wonderful day. Amen.